guys, it's Joel. Welcome back to the channel and to another of my brutally honest reviews today with this very fine specimen. It's a gorgeous Audi RS5 Sportback, but not just any RS5 because this is the performance edition. It's got all the bells and whistles, an over £100,000 price tag, and it's limited to just 250 units, of which only 10 will be in the UK. And this is one of them. I have to say, in this Ascari blue paintwork with those 20 inch five spoke multicolored wheels this is an absolutely gorgeous thing to look at it's just so perfectly proportioned but then to be honest if you think back to when the a5 first came out as a model in a coupe it's gradually gotten a little bit bigger and we had the s5 with the 4.2 v8 that's a car i've always wanted to own i don't think there's been an audi a5 that's ever not been good looking in fact i think it's probably one of the most pretty audi models that we've ever had and this is definitely no exception because this is the performance edition, we do have a few extra little bits over a standard RS5 on the exterior, such as gloss black mirrors, the gloss black Audi rings, and also some side pieces, the window trims in black too. But most of the trickery and little extras that come with the performance edition over the standard RS5 are to do with what's underneath the car. So starting at the business end of this RS5 performance edition then, it's the 2.9 litre V6 engine propelling this thing along the road and in this performance edition it outputs 470 ps as opposed to the 450 in normal rs5 all in all it increases the acceleration time from 3.7 to 60 to 3.5 honestly fairly negligible but with this they have removed the speed limiter and thus this will go on to do a top speed of 300 kilometers an hour or 186 miles per hour which is pretty quick for a four-door Audi. It of course uses a Quattro all-wheel drive system, but this car uses a Torsen rear differential with rear torque bias, which is updated for the performance edition. It has the RS Sports exhaust system, as well as the RS Sports Suspension Pro, which is actually manually adjustable coilovers, which is quite interesting. And finally, of course, gorgeous, massive RS ceramic brakes. It is, however, when we step inside the RS5, that my knees become a little weak because of these absolutely stunning RS bucket seats. These are probably the most uh, gorgeous things I've ever had the pleasure of looking at. They are carbon backed, so the passengers in the back get a nice view too. And I'll be honest with you, when this car first turned up, um, I've done a road trip in this car, I've done over a thousand miles in the week that I've had it. I was actually quite concerned because I thought, oh, for goodness sake, these are not adjustable really. They can go up, down, you can recline them which is a bonus so you can slide forwards and back but there's no bolster lumbar anything like that and i was very concerned actually that they would be rather uncomfortable for the road trip that i had planned but long story short they're not they're really really comfortable they're a little tricky to get in and out of actually because the bolsters are so high the leg supports down here and if you're a slightly larger gentleman or woman you might struggle a little bit with getting comfortable but for me they're actually really really thick and very well padded and so i've not had any issues with comfort at all other little interior bits to touch on i believe the seat belts with this red stitching on the edges is exclusive to this performance edition car as well as the red stitching along the side of the alcantara here and i don't think there's much more to write home about um, I have to keep questioning whether this is really a limited edition car because there is no placard in here to signify that it is. I mean, it'll be really embarrassing if I've got that wrong. And in fact, I'm going to send Audi an email to double check it. But there's nothing to say, you know, one of 250. Like in the R8 GT, which I drove recently, there's a placard in there to say that this car is number X of 333. And you'd think with an even more limited car like this, there would be the same thing. But no, we've just got a Quattro badge there. RS badge here and nothing else. We do though have this absolutely gorgeous three spoke flat bottomed RS steering wheel, which just reminds me of some of their older models. Do you remember the mid noughties RS4? Probably one of my favorite Audis ever made, one which I'd love to own. And the flat bottom steering wheel in that was just sublime. And this does remind me of this really lovely trimmed in Alcantara, not quite as soft or hard wearing it feels as what you find in such as a newer Porsche, but lovely, lovely, lovely thing nonetheless. Flappy paddles on the back of the wheel, of course, for changing gears if you wish to that way. Audi flappy paddles are never particularly engaging or exciting. You can obviously use the shifter here to do it like that. Um, I find them okay, but also in the S transmission mode, uh, this thing does do a rather good job. We have cruise control, but not adaptive in this car, which you would probably expect for a four-door A5 that's over a hundred thousand pounds. 
Personally, I don't really like adaptive all that much, so I'm not too bothered. And then moving on to the central area, we have the stuck on screen, which does date this car a little bit because most modern Audis have moved on now to have something integrated into the dash here. Again, I actually quite like it. It's in a more accessible place as the driver. You don't have to look down and take your eyes off the road as much. So I do actually like that it's still got this screen, but I know for most people and in the future, it will date the car a little bit but I like it. It's very functional, wireless Apple CarPlay as per usual, and various configurability options inside. And then the best thing of all, actual buttons for my heated seats, actual scroll reels for my air conditioning, and a button to activate my parking sensors or deactivate them, and also a drive select button as well for switching between auto, RS modes, and comfort. Really, really solid, great interior. It's not particularly fancy or over the top, and it's not particularly screaming £100,000, but I do like the fact that it's functional and it doesn't really have too much of this weird electronic stuff. One more thing to just touch on if I switch the car on is this car has white dials, which only come on this performance edition. Again, harking back to some of their previous models. Of course, it's just electronic, but it is a nice little touch to have nonetheless. So in the RS5 performance then, and well, the first thing I want to address is, look, this is over a hundred thousand pounds for an RS5. It does seem like an awful lot of money, especially when you compare it to its competition. I mean, M3 competition, for example, or maybe even a M4. They're 20 grand less, but I really do want to applaud Audi because they're doing a really good job at prolonging the lives of their combustion engines like we have here with the 2.9 litre V6. I really applaud the fact that they do these limited edition specials regardless of their reasoning because it means that there'll be more of these cars for longer for us to enjoy for longer. You've got to think 10, 20 years down the line in the future maybe you'll be able to pick one of these up and it really will be the best of the best of the RS5. I also want to give massive props to Audi despite the fact it's 2024 for making this RS5 sound so fantastic. I've always thought this V6 engine in the Audi range sometimes pips the V8 like you find in the RS6, RS7 on noise, um, but this is definitely no exception because it just has a wonderful induction noise and then it does those sort of upshift pops and downshift pops that you know are quite addictive. I really enjoy them. I love the fact that Audi have put these outrageous bucket seats in this car. They really don't need to do that, but it really just adds a whole load of drama to the experience. It does make you feel like you're driving something special, something limited, which this car is. And then at least with this RS5 model, as I mentioned, they've not given in to the whole one screen fits all system. There are buttons for controlling essentials. I even like the fact that there's still a knob here for making the lights on the dash brighter and darker, such at night time when you don't want it illuminating your face. There's just a knob to do it. I don't have to go in any screen here to adjust them. And then the way that this engine delivers its 470 PS, it's incredibly payful. Peak torque is under 2000 RPM, but you still feel like you want to work the car up to the 7000 RPM red line. In fact, when you do do that, you get more of that upshift sound. And the thing is here, I am flooring it down this national speed limit road, and I'm not finding myself breaking the speed limit. I'm actually using all the power and not breaking any laws, which is fantastic. And then you've got those carbon ceramic brakes to slow you down when you come up to the junction. But the acceleration on this thing is really quite sublime. I mean, three and a half seconds to 60, and it certainly feels like it. And then when you start getting into the corners, it's really apparent that this thing is on rails. I suppose it's to do with that suspension system this car has. It sits lower than standard RS5, in fact, it looks very low, and the turning is just really sharp. You have to be going pretty quickly 
to start getting any sense of body roll. In terms of efficiency, when you are stuck behind traffic, it's not the best. I mean, actually, I think you can see I've done shade over 1,100 miles in this car over the last week, 27 hours of driving. So I really have gotten to grips with this thing. Uh, and I've averaged 25.6. And obviously, I've been doing a lot of having fun accelerating, but also a lot of that has been cruising into France on the auto route, sitting at 80, 85 miles an hour over there. Uh, so that gives you a fairly representative combined average, I would say. I think if you were a little bit more frugal, you wouldn't struggle to get to 30 mpg, but it is not the most economical car, although it certainly is a, a shade better than the V8. So the RS6, I remember, struggled to get low 20s as a combined average. So this is, is better in that sense, but I suppose you're probably not buying this thing for fuel economy purposes. It really is a wonderful engine. It sounds great. It delivers a lovely amount of power. It's not too much, but it's certainly not too little. And then you combine that with a sharp turn in the fabulous levels of grip and those carbon ceramic brakes. It really is a wonderfully compelling package. And although I presume you can't actually buy one of these, I mean, there's only 10 in the UK, surely they're all sold. One of them is this press car. Presumably you can't get one right now, but I think, like I said earlier, this you've got to think is that, you know, these cars will be on the market in 10 years, five years from now. And at that point when probably everything is at least hybrid, if not electric, this is gonna really look like an engaging, exciting, thrilling car. Like I say, it still sounds great even in 2024, which is extremely hard to do. Manufacturers are very penalized for sound, emissions, catalytic converters, all the rest of it. But they've still managed to give this some personality, some character. And it goes without saying, of course, that you can do all of that, but have five people comfortably sat with you. There's a good size boot on this car as well. It's an RS5, it's a relatively practical thing, but it, I say it's a baby RS7 is what this thing is. It goes under the radar too, as most Audi RS models do. It's just lovely because no one's looking at you, no one knows what you're in. It's a bit of a sleeper, this thing. I would absolutely love to take this thing on track because I think it would just be sublime. Gosh. It does handle awfully well. Let's do a nice flooring acceleration. <laughs> and you're well into third gear before you hit 60 miles an hour, which is also really nice. You do get to work with the car before you're over the speed limit, which, you know, is so important if you're driving these things in the UK. Is this thing super expensive? Yes, but then there's two ways of looking at it. It is limited. It's probably the last thing they'll make of this kind. It's got the carbon ceramic brakes and all the goodies, including these seats. But by golly, is it good fun to drive? And do I applaud Audi and say bravo for making something like this in 2024? It really is great. And look at what they're doing. I mean, look at the RS6 GT that's out now. I mean, fair play to Audi for doing what they're doing, considering the route that they're going on, which I have to say, I'm probably not quite as fond of, but we'll see what goes on. They're joining F1 in a couple of years time. It's gonna be an interesting thing to watch with Audi. So anyway, on that, I will say thank you to Audi for letting me have the keys to this really special car for the last week. I have very much enjoyed it. I think you've got to focus on the positives with these sorts of things. It's 2024, it's not gonna be natural aspirated, it's not gonna sound as good as the original V8 RS5, of course it won't, but considering where we are and everything they've done and implemented with this, I, I'm very impressed. And in years to come, I will be looking at these on the classifieds and thinking about having one as potentially a fun daily driver. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Do leave a comment below on your thoughts. As always, I love to hear what you guys think. And if you haven't already, and you're one of the 70% of people that have not subscribed, I would really, really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button. And I thank you ever so much. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one very soon.